Welcome back. Let's talk about Transport uh, Transport Corporation, TCI as we know it. Uh, uh, revenue and margin for the company came in at an all-time high. And if you just take a look at the way the company's performed in all of FY22 as well, there's been a big jump in the company's margins, profitability, revenue is crossing that 3,000 crore mark as well. We're now joined by Vineet Agarwal, the MD of the company. Thanks a lot, Vineet, for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. The big uh, chunk of your improvement this time around in terms of business came in from the seaways division where uh, there were elevated freight rates as well. Do you expect these rates to sustain? And in light of that, what kind of growth can you guide for in FY23? Yes, hi. Uh, thank you for having me. It's uh, It's been quite a, a very high level of disruption in supply chains as we know it. And uh, the clear-cut clear impact has been on container freight rates across the world. Uh, shortage of container ships and so on. Uh, we operate mostly on the domestic sector with six ships uh, and they operate, let's say, on the east coast and the west coast of India. Uh, what has happened, of course, is that with uh, fuel prices increasing and this disruption, we are seeing that the freight rates uh, have gone up substantially in the last few months. Um, also, we've done a few voyages which have gone to overseas uh, sectors. For example, uh, India has allowed the movement of uh, pulses from Myanmar. So we did a few trips to Myanmar and that was also quite profitable for us. Uh, so net net, uh, because of uh, the uh, external circumstances right now, uh, including fuel and the disruptions, we are seeing good results. Uh, going forward, I think this will continue for some time, at least for the six, nine months. Uh, we are seeing that the capacity addition globally has been a lot slower. The disruptions because of China and other areas is still having an impact. And of course the Ukraine war uh, so this will mean that uh, freight rates on the container side globally and domestically will remain a little uh, on the higher side, at least for the next six months uh, in this fiscal. Okay. So, Mr. Agarwal, uh, for Seaways, the segment in specific, this quarter you did around a 23% growth. Your margins also came in at almost 30%. Given that you're envisaging the situation to probably continue for the next six to nine months, are we looking at, say, uh, the next two quarters uh, reporting a similar growth in this segment and margins? Uh, yes, to some extent, because uh, let's say that uh, FI22, the first half of the year, we had a, quite a good growth. That was a pent-up demand that was there. Also, the marketplace was looking quite attractive. And uh, this will continue for some time. I think we are seeing, you know, once in a while, we'll see some sectors go up and down. Um, but uh, broadly speaking, for the full year, we're looking at a guidance of 10 to 15 percent on the revenue side for the entire company and uh, also the similar number for the uh, profitability. So with the kind of growth that is expected in the seaways business, does that mean that this 10 to 15 percent sort of uh, guidance that you have would mean uh, freight and supply chain would grow at a slightly lower clip than the seaways division? Can you give us... Uh, guidance for uh, the individual segments as well, uh, that is freight as well as supply chain? Sure. Uh, you see, what's happened with supply chain is that the disruption in the uh, automotive market because of the semiconductor chip shortage has, a, has had an impact on the business. And we think that uh, in the second half of this year, that should start picking up. So, so what we might lose out because of this higher freight rate in the shipping business, in the seaways business, we should start getting back in the other businesses uh, also, typically, we will also see the uh, the freight business has a lot of impact on the capital goods sector and the uh, engineering goods, etc. And we are seeing that picking up also. So again, second half of the year, the other two divisions will start picking up more. Uh, perhaps the seaways will come down a bit. So hence, you know, a moderated uh, guidance for the full year is at 10 to 15 percent. Uh, but yes, we are seeing that supply chains uh, disruption is uh, actually creating a lot of opportunities for companies like us because companies have now moved not, not from just in time always to just in case as well, which means that you need mm. to build more inventories and add more warehousing space and essentially create a pipeline uh, of the supply chain which is more visible uh, because you are uh, in a very unpredictable situation. Okay. So you are expecting 10 to 15 percent growth. Are you now um, a double digit margin company? Because FY22 has been a fantastic year for you. You closed with 17 percent margins. But before that, you were doing 8 to 9 percent margins every fiscal. So are you now a double digit company on a sustainable basis? Well, certain things have also helped us to get to that stage uh, this year, which is, for example, the um, 
interest costs have come down substantially and we've almost become debt free. And this is because uh, we had good cash flows as well as lower capex. I do expect our capex to pick up uh, in the current fiscal. We are looking at uh, 300 crore capex for this year uh, because of the addition of ca capacity into our shipping business, into our uh, other divisions, including building some uh, hub centers, et cetera. When that starts adding up, I think some uh, pressure might come on the margins to some extent, but I think we will be in this range of um, 8 to 12 percent uh, because that that uh, that gives us the leverage to move both when we are doing capex as well as when we are having good times like we are doing right now and and part of this uh, FI23. Eight to twelve percent is quite a range, but uh, we'll uh, take your word for it. And a lot of new players have entered the space as well. They don't have the kind of legacy costs as well as high investments that uh, you guys would have had back in the day. Now they're investing more so in technology, etc. Will that impact incumbents like you? I mean, I'm speaking particularly in case of someone like a delivery, which uh, has listed on the bourses with uh, uh, a market cap which is higher than everyone else, but understandably because their revenues are higher than everyone else as well. And at that, uh, they're growing over 48% compounded. What is it that you guys are doing right operationally? And uh, if you could comment on that space? I don't want to comment specifically on any particular company, but I think there are companies that are built to last and the companies that are built to sell. Um, so I think uh, we definitely fall in the former category. And uh, the idea is sustainable growth over long, long term. Uh, that's important, but continuously keep innovating because uh, as you rightly said, there are disruptions that are happening because of technology and we are at the forefront of it. If we wouldn't have been there, then we would have lost market share as well, which has not happened. Uh, uh, so that's one point. The second is I think the uh, many of the new companies that are coming in have a lot of uh, things that are very easily applicable. It's not that we cannot copy that and uh, do that. Some things are good, but they're also using some of the stuff that we've been doing in the last uh, decades uh, as well. The third most important thing is the human factor. I think the legacy that we had is uh, not just to, uh, we have a very high degree of employee satisfaction, very high degree of uh, customer NPS scores, uh, um, which is basically because uh, both employees and customers are able to see eye to eye with each other and we are able to build new services you know like for example uh, our supply chain business like the joint venture that we just sure. formed for cold chain business like what we are doing in the chemical logistics these are all areas that are unique <laughs> and also where customers really want all us right. to right we're going to we're going to leave it on that note it's a great conversation but uh, we've completely run out of time so we'll pick it up at some other point thanks very much for joining in and speaking to us so TCI up around 2% time for a break now. Up next, Manisha Gupta Commodities Editor will be joining in.